Stereotactic radio surgery is a safe, well-established treatment option for patients with AVMs, especially those that are small or located in eloquent areas of the brain. Despite recent advances in radio surgery technology, however, outcomes for these patients haven't significantly improved with time. And uh, multiple recent studies suggest that AVMs treated using more contemporary techniques uh, may actually be less likely to obliterate following radio surgery. Hi, everyone. My name is Cody Nesbick. I'm a neurosurgery resident at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And I'd like to discuss with you one of my forthcoming manuscripts entitled The Role of Biological Effective Dose in Stereotactic Radio Surgery for Cerebral Arteriovenous Malformations, which will be available in the upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Modern radiosurgical treatment approaches prioritize a very conformal dose that minimizes radiation exposure to the surrounding brain, which minimizes radiation-induced adverse effects, but also prolongs treatment time. As radiation-induced DNA damage is both dose and time dependent, prolonged treatment times may have the consequence of decreasing the effective therapeutic dose of radiation to AVMs. The biological effective dose, or BED, is a metric that accounts for both margin dose and treatment time into a single value. Given our prior observations, we sought to determine whether BED was predictive of AVM obliteration after single session stereotactic radiosurgery. To answer this question, we performed a retrospective cohort study, including patients treated over a 25 year period at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, who had at least two years of radiographic follow up. In addition to BED, we collected well established relevant radiosurgical and clinical variables and compared rates of obliteration following single session stereotactic radiosurgery. This study included 352 patients with 360 AVMs with a median follow-up of 5.9 years. 259 patients, or about 72%, showed obliteration by imaging at a median of 36 months after radiosurgery. We found that superficial location, shorter treatment times, fewer radiation isocenters were associated with a higher likelihood of AVM obliteration. Consistent with these findings, we found that a higher BED was also associated with an increased likelihood of obliteration on univariate analyses, both when treated as a continuous and a dichotomous variable. We next performed multivariate analyses to determine independent predictors of AVM obliteration after radiosurgery. Given the predicted collinearity between multiple variables, including BED, margin dose, number of isocenters, and treatment time, we performed lasso regression analysis to determine which variables performed best in a multivariate model of potentially collinear variables. Notably, BED outperformed margin dose in lasso regression analyses, and along with superficial location, higher BED remained a predictor of avian obliteration on categorical um, uh, analyses. Taken together, these results suggest that BED is predictive of AVM obliteration and is therefore a clinically meaningful variable in stereotactic radiosurgery for AVMs. These findings highlight the importance of considering not only margin dose, but also treatment time and isocenter number in maximizing likelihood of AVM obliteration while minimizing radiation-associated adverse events. Further study is necessary to determine whether BED optimization should be considered as well as treatment dose for AVMs uh, stereotactic radiosurgery planning. If you'd like to learn more about the role of BED in radiosurgery for AVMs, uh, please see our article in the upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Thank you for listening and stay well. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter more information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.